This is Access Ann Arbor. Hi, my name is Stephanie Lawrence and I'm the Development Manager at Big Brothers Big Sisters of Washtenaw County. I'm here today with our Executive Director, Jennifer Spittler, and our Community Engagement Specialist, Haley Decker. January is National Mentoring Month and it's a great time for mentoring programs like us to share a little bit of information about what we do, thank our supporters, and reach out to potential individuals who may be interested in becoming a part of the mentoring movement. There are two important dates to remember in January. January 12th, I'm a Mentor Day, which is a social media movement. January 19th, Thank Your Mentor Day, which is a great day to reach out to those individuals who have made you who you are today and tell them thank you. Jen, let's get started with you. Tell me a little bit about you and your involvement with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Well, I've been with Big Brothers Big Sisters of Washington and County here for 15 years now. Um, and I think the thing over uh, those years that I've realized more and more, um, I know it's so cliche, but is that kids really are our future. Um, you see it each generation, um, but I see it in the kids that we get to serve every year. Um, and uh, I had mentors in my life that saw that in me. I think that a lot of us um, had challenges growing up or, um, you know, struggled with certain subjects or just, you know, different things. Growing up's not easy all the time. So um, I had, you know, teachers and coaches and different people that impacted me, um, which I'm so thankful for. Uh, but really what it comes down to and what I think about when I think about mentoring is it's someone to believe in you. It really is just about that core belief in you as a person and what you um, can accomplish and who you can be um, in life. And I think that there are unfortunately too many kids in our community that don't have that um, person that really uh, focuses on them and shows them how important they are. Um, in this county alone, we have almost 15,000 kids who are deemed at risk for one reason or another who don't have that um, support system necessarily around them that will will boost them up and um, help them reach their potential uh, and I think that that's what's most important about the work that we do is really about helping kids reach their potential and Haley tell me a little bit about becoming a big yeah um, so Big Brothers Big Sisters of Washtenaw County is with you every step of the way um, you know we take you through the enrollment process um, we start off with an orientation training session where we tell you all about you know who we are as an organization the kids that we serve and most importantly the supports that we provide um, from there we, we get to know you in the best way possible um, we make matches that are incredibly intentional and informed we're not throwing people together willy-nilly um, you know we work really hard to get to know our volunteers as well as our kids and our families so that we can make matches that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so we, we take you through that enrollment process and get you ready to meet your potential little. Um, at this point, we are always in great need of more mentors, um, more male mentors specifically. Um, so the average wait for um, a little brother in our community who is looking for a big brother um, is unfortunately a year, if not longer, from the point in which they're enrolled. Um, at this point, you know, about 70-75% of the volunteers that come through the door are women. Um, women are more likely to volunteer and more likely to volunteer with kids. Um, and a lot of our kids are looking for a male role model specifically. Um, when we talk a little bit about the demographics of our kids, um, you know, 76%, if not more of them, are coming from single-parent female-headed households and often lack a positive male role model. Um, and so we're always looking for more men in our community who are uh, willing to kind of step up to the plate and, and possibly be that, that um, champion, that confidence booster um, for a kid who who wants or needs it great talk to me a little bit about what support system Big Brothers Big Sisters provides to sure. bigs in its program sure um, so one of the things that really sets Big Brothers Big Sisters apart from other youth development as well as mentoring programs specifically is the match support component um, so every big little and family member um, you know who is enrolling their kid um, they are supported by a match support specialist um, this person acts as a caseworker um, they are there to check in with them on a regular basis to provide activity ideas 
um, to you know troubleshoot should any conflicts or issues arise. Um, this is not a normal way to meet people, and so sometimes the relationship just needs a little bit more um, support, for lack of a better word. Um, they're they're there to um, help our families as well as our bigs gain access to resources. Um, they kind of act as a, a liaison to other things in the community, um, other resources that we can help make available to all of our kids and to our families. Um, additionally, they're there if you need anything. You know, if you have a question, um, if you're not really sure how to handle a particular situation, um, if you just want some feedback on how potentially you're making a difference or you want to share a story, um, our, our match support specialists are there um, and you work with the same person consistently throughout um, the duration of your match. And so you're really able to develop a relationship with them in addition to your little and your little's family. I think one of the things that's kind of cool, and I, this is how I describe it to people, is that you know the, the bigs are mentoring the littles, and the staff, to some degree, mm -hmm. is mentoring the bigs, just in terms of supporting and guiding and believing and, and helping them you know, build confidence yeah. in developing that relationship. Um, I think the other thing that's really cool and important that we do is we provide group events. Yeah. So sometimes we do smaller group events like activity nights in our office. So bigs and littles can get together with other bigs and littles. And it's a free or low, very, very low cost opportunity. So the matches or the bigs aren't having to spend a lot of money on the activity and they're not having to think of something that month or, you know, it's one of the times during the month they don't have to think of what to do. Last, uh, in December we did, um, gingerbread house making uh, that was great it decorated our office because some of the kids left us their gingerbreads and so we got to you know yeah. just see them and the month before we had done uh, like puff paint uh, for the kids for t-shirts mm -hmm. um, and we have some of those that one of the girls left in the office just it decorates the office and it's also fun but it's a good opportunity for the match support specialists um, that Haley was talking about to be able to see the matches in action because when you see how they interact with each other sometimes you're able to give them more supports because you, you understand how that match is working because match support happens more regularly on the phone or via email checking in with the families and the volunteers um, and then we do big group events so every um, every year we do several big group events this last year we went to a Tigers game put 20, 25 matches in a bus, yeah. took them down to Detroit. Um, it was the first Tigers game for many of our kids. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we went to the zoo. Um, we have an annual picnic. We have an annual rec night. Um, one of my favorite activities that we've done now two years in a row is build a bike. So we have a company that supports us um, and buys unbuilt bikes that the big and the little assemble together with the engineers from the company. And so it's a good opportunity for the matches to see other matches, again, kind of going through how the relationship works and how they talk to each other. And But for them to actually accomplish something together um, is very cool. And so we provide those kind of group event opportunities for matches to get together um, and, and experiences with the kids, even though the relationship really is that one-on-one -on -one relationship, it's important that it's one-on-one, -on -one, but they can come out and do things like that. So we try to support them in that way um, and, and do things that, you know, they, I mean, what kid doesn't want to ride their bike in the summertime? So mm -hmm. we get to do that in the summertime. Awesome. You've spoken a little bit about BIGS, but tell me, how does a family become enrolled in the program? So the family enrollment is very similar to the, uh, the enrollment of a, of a mentor. Um, we, the parent reaches out to us. Uh, so any kid in Washtenaw County between the ages of seven and 14 can enroll in the program that wants and needs a mentor. So we will then, once the application comes in, we go out and talk to them the same as we do volunteers, getting to know them, their situation, um, what the kids like, what they don't like, uh, what, you know, how they're doing in school, what are their peer relationships like, all the same sort of things we're talking to bigs about so that we can make those very intentional matches. Um, it's important that we get a sense of what's going on in the household um, so that we can support not only the family but the match once we're able to find the right big. Um, and so that, you know, families come, come to us for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes the parent wants, you know, the role model, they want the opportunity to opportunities and experiences for their kids. Sometimes, you know, they really need help with homework or there, you know, there's different things that different parents are seeking um, when they come to us. But any kid who really could just use that additional support um, and the access to those opportunities and experiences that our community has to offer. I mean, this is such a, a rich community in things for kids to do. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, many of our kids don't have access, whether it's transportation or 
um, parents just not knowing what all's going on or time. can't afford to do it. Time, um, working, they're yeah. in school. Maybe there's you know several kids at home. So giving kids that one-on-one -on -one attention or having the ability to take you know a couple kids out to to some it gets pricey for for any family and especially for families that struggle. Um, so you know those are the kinds of things that uh, we try to try to provide um, through that mentoring relationship. Uh, we also, Haley was talking about the need for uh, men. Um, conversely, we need little sisters. Yeah. So because we have so many more big sisters that come through the door to mentor, um, and we have more little brothers on the wait list, um, we're always looking for little sisters. And I think sometimes maybe women don't enroll their daughters as much because they see themselves as that female role model. And I think it's important um, that folks understand it's not, we're not there to be a parent or even a parenting role in, in that mentor relationship. It's really about, I mean, what kid can't use an additional role model or an additional support or, you know, just someone to be there for them. And so, um, you know, we really encourage uh, little sisters to come to us as they, um, as you know, they grow and learn and, and, and want to get out and do things in the community. And Jen, you've been with the organization for a pretty long time now. What would you signal as some of the most important components of Big Brothers Big mm -hmm. Sisters? Um, I think that there are a couple of things that make us unique. Um, it's that one-to-one -one component. There's a lot of youth development programs out there that do great things for kids, but we really focus on that one-to-one -one relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's key, that match support that Haley talked about. Um, that's really important to, uh, to what we do and to, to ensuring that the relationships thrive um, and we can see the real impact. Uh, the relationship has to be successful and it has to last. Yeah. Um, and so those pieces that we provide, it's we also ensure or, or request from the volunteer a consistency and a commitment. So we ask the volunteers to spend at least two to three times a month with their little. Um, the time can vary. You know, sometimes it's an outing that is, you know, they're going for ice cream and to the library. Sometimes if they go to a Tigers game or to something else that lasts three or four hours, or you know, five or six, it, yeah. it's a long, <laughs> you know, it's a longer day. Um, and so uh, it's, uh, excuse me, it's, um, it's uh, uh, just the, the things that, that, they, that they do that we um, uh, can support. And then the outcomes that we have that are most important um, are really based on the evidence uh, based practice that we run. You know, we're a part of a hundred year old organization. So Big Brothers Big Sisters has been around for a really long time. We've been in Washtenaw County for 25 years, but the national organization has been perfecting the model for many, many years. And so anytime um, new program standards are put out or just a new program opportunity, um, it's piloted across the country before it's rolled out to us. And so I think that um, that makes us unique and very. it's a very important mm -hmm. component to what we do. Um, is that we're tested um, and there's a lot of evidence and research behind what we do. There are three main outcomes that come from that one-to-one -one mentoring relationship um, that we know uh, are important to kids growing and, and that relationship can help build their confidence. Um, it helps them academically um, and it helps them avoid risky behaviors. I think what you find, um, if any of us remember growing up, that as you age, um, you you know the the environment changes middle school changes and then high school and there are more uh, peer pressures or more um, kind of uh, community environmental things mm -hmm. that that play and having a, an important person in your life that you can bounce things off of and be there for you um, can help you from maybe making some choices that aren't great um, that tend to happen as as kids age and so that's what that mentoring mentoring role can do as well. Um, we know from long-term studies uh, uh, the impact, and I think that there's also, um, there's also this study that National did several years ago with former, I always say this wrong, with adult former littles. Um, so they reached out to kids that had been in the program previously to see you know, looking back on that relationship, what kind of an impact did it have on you? Not only did it increase their confidence, mm -hmm. but I think that the one thing um, that I always find most interesting is that they say that the big provided them stability when they needed it. So it was about a consistent person in their life, um, just kind of being there uh, throughout that time uh, when they really needed that, you know, just the, con the, the consistency. Yeah. yeah. And Haley, sound it, being a big sounds like it's 
quite a process. It's a long-term commitment. Mm -hmm. You know, you're one-on-one -on -one with a kid, even though you do have that professional support. What would you say to people who perhaps are a little nervous or anxious yeah. about becoming a big? And what would you say to those who maybe being a big isn't right for them right now? How sure. else can they help? So um, to answer your first question, um, there are a lot of people who don't necessarily think that they're going to be a great mentor. Um, and you know, you don't have to have it all figured out to be a great, positive person in the life of a kid. Um, I think, you know, as Jen has really highlighted, it's the consistency. Um, it's being reliable and following through. Um, it's about being yourself. Um, I mean, and, and two, going back to what I was saying previously with the in intentionality of the matches that we make, um, you know, any volunteer, we're going to make a match that makes sense for them. So maybe they think that their interests or their personality um, or maybe some of their experiences even wouldn't make them a good fit for quote unquote kids today. Um, but that's, that's not the case. Um, and we, you know, we make matches that make sense um, and are really going to, you know, focus on doing that. Um, for somebody who's not necessarily ready, um, or this maybe just isn't the right time or the right experience for them yet, um, there are a lot of different ways to get involved. Um, first and foremost, um, they can help with uh, recruitment efforts. Um, we are, since we are always in need of more, more bigs, um, they can let people know that we're here in our community. Um, I think not enough people know that Big Brothers Big Sisters is an option if they're ready to get involved with kids in some capacity. Um, so they can assist with recruitment. Um, and, and going off of that, they could um, invite us to come to their office or a group of their friends, speak about Big Brothers Big Sisters, maybe they're in a fraternity or a book club. Um, you know, come out and just let us share a little bit about the organization um, and let people know that, you know, when they're ready, they can come to us. Um, there are also some more um, sort of financial ways in which they could support us. Um, they could become a donor. Um, they could support us through sponsoring group events, as Jen mentioned before. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of really great group events that we partner with donors um, or, you know, someone who um, is able to, you know, uh, possibly provide us with uh, become a community partner. Um, we have a program called Business with a Heart, where there are a lot of uh, companies or, you know, businesses um, in the community that are able to give our matches access to a service that they provide. Um, either at a free or more discounted rate. Um, you know, for example, the Hands-On Museum being a great place where a lot of our matches spend a lot of time. Um, they're able to get out there um, and they can get into the Hands-On Museum anytime that they want for free. Um, and so that provides our matches with access to things um, that they may not otherwise have access to. Um, additionally, we do an adopt a family program. Um, so every year, um, we uh, this year we adopted I think forty. It was forty one. Forty one families. Um, and so you know whether it's you as an individual, you and your family, your community, um, possibly through a religious community or your office, um, coming together and adopting a family um, is a really great way too to give back, especially around the holidays. Um, I think I touched on all of that. That's a lot of fun for us, too, because yeah. we have to <laughs> Santa. Yeah. Um, it's hectic and crazy, yeah. uh, picking up gifts, dropping them off, getting lists, and making it all happen. Yeah. But it is, um, it's pretty rewarding, and I think that it's pretty rewarding for the people that get to do it as well. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think I touched on all of the other ways that they can support us. Definitely. And I think just to sort of add to what you two are saying, adopt a family was certainly my favorite part. Yeah. Getting to see the families pick up their presents and you do get to act like Santa. Mm -hmm. They're so grateful and so thankful for all of the great basics and fun toys that they get. Well, yeah. and I think that it allows, one of the things I say is most, I think, important about adoptive family is it allows some normalcy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a, that's a kind of standard in our community is celebrating the holidays and when you don't have a lot under your tree, um, it's, 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 it's hard to be as excited. And so when we can give that to kids, it's yeah. pretty cool. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I am thankful that we are able to have a moment to chat and I think we should shoot to a video. We go bike riding, rollerblading sometimes. Uh, we went bowling before. Well, sometimes we go to Sky Zone. Mm -hmm. Once she took him to a baseball game and it was super fun. We like go try like all types of different restaurants. We threw rocks in a pond and broke ice. <laughs> it's true. Throwing rocks in a pond was years ago, uh, but it's cool that he brings that up again and uh, that had a lasting impact. 
We go swimming a lot. We uh actually went to, and we do like football games and stuff like that. And once I think she took me to um like um a play at my school. It was super fun and my mom couldn't go, mm -hmm. but it was just me and her and it was really fun. Um attend sporting events. Definitely uh you know any game we can go to, I'm always one to you know go something new. So how long have you been matched with David? Over three years. He has grown up so much in three years. Three years. Um, four years. How Sixteen long? years now. A year. And does it feel like it's been a whole year? No, it feels like it's going faster. Yeah? Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> so how would you describe David? Tall. Okay, cool. Anything else? Short hair. Okay. Nice shoes. <laughs> He's funny, he's uh, outgoing, he's very outgoing. How would you describe Amy? A nice, kind, and funny person. <laughs> Fun, funny, cool, ah, that's a um, nice answer. and easygoing. <laughs> Makes me feel happy. It's like we have so much fun together and it's like the things she mentioned were some of the favorite things you know I enjoy doing with her too. She makes me feel really happy and I just always want to be around her. Cool. He right. made me feel like I'm safe when I'm when, I, when I'm with him. He uh, made me feel safe. He made me feel like I don't have to hide anything from him. She makes me feel happy because like when I'm sad <laughs> she can break up my mood. But start off as like you know I, I was six years old, he was, you know, this guy, and, you know, I didn't have many male influences, you know, at that time in my life, and over the years, he's, you know, really been somebody I look up to, he's been my mentor, you know, he listens, you know, he gives advice, you know, he's something, somebody I can feel really comfortable around. It was nice to hear him say that, you know, he used the word mentor, which I take as a great sort of honor that he thinks of me that way. Is there anything special you've learned from Kate? How to be confident and believe in myself. Yeah, I think our confidence has gone up. That's the main thing I've noticed. If you could say one thing to Amy, what would it be? I think you're really sweet and I wish you were around me all the time. If you could say one thing to David, what would it be? You're awesome. Uh, I agree with him, we're pretty awesome together. That is, that's true. And if you could say one thing to Brian, what would you say? You're the greatest guy I've ever Aww. met. Well, it makes me feel good. <laughs> he said a lot of nice things. Yeah, and we don't often, you know, talk that openly about how we make each other feel, so it's nice to hear. <laughs> I think it's uh, hanging out with Tanner uh, brings out, I guess, another side of me. It's a reminder to kind of get out of the world that I'm existing in right now. Uh, and see somebody else's life and participate in another family's life and to see the amount of fun that he has uh, and the amount of excitement he gets when he's exploring new things and growing and developing. Uh, that's a whole another area of kind of joy in my life to live that with him. Thank you for watching that video. I love, love to see all of our matches talking and that really brings me to a great point um, in January on top of celebrating National Mentoring Month we celebrate our bigs of the year and we have uh, two matches that I would love to talk about and I'm certain Haley and Jen will want to add something about both of them but the first one is Kate and Cherie Kate is the big sister and Cherie is the little sister Cherie is 11 or 12 now and they've been matched for about a year and a half and when they started their relationship, Shree was extremely shy. But Kate has really emboldened her to become this brave, insightful young woman who's very able to be proud about the things that she's good at, specifically art and beating boys at races, <laughs> at leg races. And I know that you two were both at Rise and Shine for Kids Sake, which is our November breakfast event. And Shree got up, remember, she's 11, 12 years old, got up and spoke in front of 300 people without any <laughs> words in front of her. She left her notes at home. Do you two have anything to add about 
that experience and yeah, it was really incredible to watch. I mean, I was I was so proud of her. I mean, she I, was very genuine. Yeah. I thought that was what was great because she didn't have her notes. She yeah. was so genuine. Yeah, and it was fun to see her just up there on that stage mm -hmm. and the the presence that she was able yeah. to have. I had we had a cool moment with her. Um, the month before when we had our open house mm -hmm. and we did car pumpkin carving at our office and she brought in her artwork to show her match support specialist Sarah mm -hmm. and so she was so proud of what she'd accomplished she wanted to bring it in and show Sarah because they had been talking about it and then she drew this great little uh, Halloween picture on my dry erase board um, that was just it was potion making and a witch and I mean she literally spent you know 20 30 yeah. minutes of the evening drawing this elaborate uh, you know dry erase marker picture on my board um, you could see the confidence you know a lot of yeah. times the kids don't I mean they don't talk at first there's just not a lot that they're willing to share with you at first but I love when they're you know able to come out of their shell and it's hard for kids to talk to adults sometimes and Absolutely. when they see us as professionals or you know we're the people in charge um, of the program yeah. kind of thing um, but you know after they've been matched for a while and they can come in the office and be like look what I did and have a conversation with you that's really cool to see yeah. yeah, and um, I had the pleasure of interviewing Kate and getting to mm -hmm. know her um, and helping to make that match with Cherie. Um, and Kate was somebody who, you know, had not had a whole lot of experience with kids outside of her immediate family. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the role of a beg can be kind of tricky to figure out. You know, I talk a lot with volunteers at our orientation training session that, you know, um, you're not, you're an adult friend, you're not a peer friend, you're not an authority figure, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not a, a babysitter, you're not, you know, you're not this and you're not that. And so sometimes it can be kind of tricky to navigate. And I really think that Kate has done a stellar job of stepping in to that big sister role, um, you know, within the context of our mentoring program mm -hmm. and really helping Cherie to, um, you know, grow and build that confidence. Um, I mean, I, I was just blown away that somebody at her age um, would be willing to stand up in front of a group of strangers. I mean, I wouldn't be able yeah. to do yeah. that at this Well, point she's the youngest <laughs> that has done that. We've had some other kids speak, and they've always 18 maybe 16, mm -hmm. yeah. but we've never had anyone quite that young, and she did a great job. Yeah. yeah, she did. And I mean, speaking about how Kate sort of came into this role and has done such a great job, our big brother of the year, Tom, who's matched with Joseph, 16-year-old boy, I can only imagine the challenges that sort of come <laughs> with that. I yeah. know when I was talking about them earlier this week, I didn't have a picture because Joseph doesn't like pictures necessarily being sure. taken of him yeah. because he's <laughs> a high school-aged boy. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Tom and Joseph are so fantastic. They're starting, they really struggled initially mm -hmm. to build that relationship because they came from two separate worlds. And now th they have this, you know, foundation yeah. that's allowing them to speak of about some hard topics like mm -hmm. higher education and financial planning, which are so important. You know, this kid is 16 in a couple of years. He might be having to seriously think about right. what's next. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think the thing that's cool about Tom, too, is you were talking about Rise and Shri mm -hmm. speaking at Rise. Tom came to us as a big from last year's Rise event. Yeah, so he, he came did. to the event. Um, he was a guest of one of the table captains, and he just, he was so inspired that he, you know, signed up to be a big brother and we were able to match him in the fall. Did you interview him? Yeah, yeah. well, I interviewed him in the winter okay. um, and then we matched oh, yeah. him, yeah, in, in the spring. spring. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. They've, they've done great. I think that they did struggle a little bit in the beginning. And, and like you said, that happens sometimes. Tom is, I'm going to say, a little bit older, um, probably in his 50s. Yeah. Um, and, you know, is it a grandfather type relationship? Right. Is it a friend type relationship? You know, and I think they had some of those um, uh, things to work through in the beginning, trying to figure out what their relationship was going to be. But um, they found their niche yeah. and they're really working it. Yeah. I'm so grateful for our bigs, our big brothers, our big sisters. They do so much great work in the community. And I know from all of us at Big Brothers Big Sisters, we are so thankful for the community of volunteers that participate in our program, uh, for the donors who make our program possible and help it run day in and day out, and our staff members too who take it upon themselves to make sure that matches are running smoothly and that matches are properly matched a big brother, big sister to a little who can, you know, really help or really do well because of this program. And I want to thank everybody for watching today. It was a great experience for all of us to chat. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you.